Welcome back and thanks for staying with us uh, today. While Social Development Deputy Minister Henrietta Buhapane Zulu says the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed hunger among school children. She was speaking at the launch of Child Protection Week in Benoni, east of Johannesburg. Buhapane Zulu says at the start of the pandemic, children had to stop going to school and this had a negative impact on them as many depend on government's feeding schemes. Now, she says despite many parents losing their jobs, they should make the safety of their children their priority. Now, let's discuss this further with Steve Miller, CEO of Save the Children South Africa, who's joining us via Zoom. Steve, thank you so much for your time. Now, governments across the world, they've restricted movements to try and slow down the spread of COVID-19, the closure of schools, social isolation, etc. Talk to us about the psychological effects of COVID-19 on children. Thanks for having me. Yeah, there's tremendous effects on children. I think the big discussion here in South Africa and globally is how this pandemic and the associated lockdown is really going to be uh, affecting children the most. I think when I was at the launch for Child Protection Week with the Deputy Minister, I agree completely uh, with what she's saying. I was um, equally pleased to see a focus this year for Child Protection Week on migrant children as well, which we can perhaps discuss a bit. Now, you mentioned uh, Child Protection Week. A lot of uh, the time when we hear of Child Protection Week, people take it quite literally to mean that we only compa- campaign during this time and put a, a spotlight mm-hmm. on children. What What is different this year? I think a lot has changed this year. If you, If I can take you back before the pandemic, Uh, which seems a very long time ago for us now. If a child uh, faced any sort of trauma or abuse or or somebody had witnessed it and wanted to report it, what they would do would would be to report it perhaps somewhere familiar, like a school, in a community, uh, perhaps to the police, to a family friend. There are a number of channels that were open. It takes a tremendous amount of courage, but yet those channels were there. And when the lockdown happened, all of that was taken away. So all of a sudden, we had a situation in which uh, uh, children found it very difficult to report. And, and we had a very little sight, those of us working in the space, on what was happening. What we do know is that the risk factors for violence increased significantly during this period. So if you think about all the job losses that happened in this country, you think about the alcohol abuse that happened. You think about that anxiety that people had when thinking about their immediate and long-term futures. And you couple that with people being cloistered together in small spaces for long periods of time and your risk factors go through the roof, becomes a very dangerous space for many children. And so this year, we're deeply concerned about what we don't see, but what we know to be happening at the same time. We're also very concerned, and this is why I appreciate the government's focus on child migrants this year, for those most vulnerable children, like the boys and girls that come separated and unaccompanied to our country during this pandemic, really felt the brunt of what happened here. And so to to shine a spotlight on their plight and their issues, I think is, is good this year. I'm sure you deal with a number of these cases. Now, talking about migrant children, maybe unpack, you know, just some of the challenges that you've seen them go through during this time and how government and organizations such as yourselves have helped them. Yeah. So the movement of people, of course, it it would have slowed a little bit, but it, it still continued. And the only difference is that you had people coming across the borders in, in more dangerous ways and, and also falling between the cracks, as it were. They're, they're limited services for these children. And our government did the best it could perhaps to, to try and, and care for our, our general population by creating new grants, etc. cetera. Uh, but all of those mechanisms were not available to migrant children. And so uh, people like ourselves, and, and, and there are quite a few like us, we, we started trying to, to target some of our assistance there and uh, we did this in, in large part through, through cash transfers, so in the form of a, of a, a grant, in, in, similar to a grant, uh, no conditions attached. But the stories that, that we came across, the, the difficulties that many of these children faced are, are just almost unimaginable. 
Now, we know that um, there was an increase in child abuse cases during lockdown. You've also alluded to that. What can be done to ensure children aren't cut off from services, essential services, when the country is in lockdown and we've moved now to, um, you know, level two lockdown? We know that uh, previously, including last year, you know, some children were even cut off from, from feeding schemes. What should we do as a society and, and government at large? Well, firstly, things have improved a, a bit. So those channels I spoke to about earlier, some of those are coming back on stream. We, we also have uh, a, an increase in, in calls, for example, to child lines. So there's increasing ways for, for people to, to report incidents, et cetera. And, and we're slowly being able to respond a little bit better. But I, I think the, the message here uh, is more one about violence prevention. You know, South Africa, there's so many reasons why this violence happens like it does in our country. And it has deep historical roots that we have not yet dealt with. It has deep roots in these inequalities that we see in our society, which we have also not yet dealt with and are actually getting worse. It has roots in the, the structure of our economy and the way that people are excluded from that. There's such a broad array of areas that need to be addressed. And when it comes down to actual violent incidents happening, Everybody, all of us, you and me, all South Africans, really need to play our part. We are either directly or indirectly implicated. So we need to raise awareness. We need to raise the alarm when we see something that's not right. And we need to help out as best that we can. Not leave this just to government as a major duty bearer, but take it upon ourselves as South Africans to deal with this issue in its many forms. Uh, you speak about um, just speaking out as South Africa. The Department of Education recently launched an anti-bullying campaign. Uh, and I mean, we've seen so many of these scenes play out at schools and how they can have devastating consequences, you know, when a child is being bullied. Another matter that probably doesn't look like bullying at first is the, the, the issue of, of, of children being told that their hair is not good enough um, in certain schools and certain quarters. What do you think that uh, we can do better than to, you know, to make sure that these in inequality, um, you know, matters that you speak of, as well as the, the general mm. bullying that we are seeing is something that is, is ended because it is a scourge. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think bullying is something that all South Africans are, are intimately aware of, whether we experienced it ourselves at school or we just witnessed it. it, it it's been a feature here. It is a little bit more complex. Yes, we need to focus on how we can stop bullying happening in the schools. We need to place an emphasis on assisting those who are, are victims of bullying. But we also need to understand that that bullying uh, has a root as well. The number one predictor of an incident of violence is a previous incident of violence, which means that that child that's doing the bullying, they learned that somewhere. They didn't just pick this up on their, on their own. They learned that at home, or they learned that from people in the community around them. So again, it's, it's a bigger issue. Instead of coming in on, on that bully and just trying to address his or her issues directly, uh, is not going to solve the problem. This is a much deeper issue and others have to take responsibility. We speak a lot about corporal punishment now during Child Protection Week because we firmly believe it is there that children learn about violence. They understand from their parents and their caregivers that violence is a means to an end. And if we stop that, if we stop corporal punishment, which it should be stopped, the, the Constitutional Court has ruled on this matter, uh, and we replace it with a positive form of parenting, uh, we will see positive outcomes, not just in the home, but also in the school. Steve Miller, CEO of Save the Children South Africa, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. That's all the time we have with you. Thank you so much for that. Well